Hello, hello. Welcome to another fresh episode of TVT. I have missed you guys. I, I've been dying and itch, itching to come and record another episode because, of course, I know that you guys missed me and I missed you guys. And that's why I brought a superstar, an icon on the couch today. Please put your hands together for Dean Really. Tell me, sir. No, it's you. That's a real superstar in the building. I never, never an icon like, like, like you. Yes. I'm very sorry. <laughs> guessing there. Really, why are you so dressed like this? Well, every day is a fashion show in my own world. I get up in the morning, I look in the mirror naked, like what I see, like my body parts and my proportions, and I say, today I am wearing this whether anybody likes it or not. So at times they will ask me in my house, ah, hey Joe, like my help, ah, brother, I'm going to Why are you going to? I'll say, no way. I'll say, hey, oh, okay. So it's used to me now. So I know, I even Wale and I, we argued all the way from the drive down here. Why are you wearing this? I'm like, leave me alone, please. I want to wear it. Ah, the boy said, look. I thank you, you thank wearing? you. Well, of course, as you can tell, the thing is, I'm a walking freebie. So everything <laughs> I have from head to toe is dash, dash. Hmm. The outfit, Tiana styling. This is Tiana's dress. Now, when I mean dress, so here's the crazy thing. Most of my friends and I, we share the same body proportions. I don't have hips, you know, mm-hmm. defense, attack, yeah. or even the midfield. It's not the same. Yeah. But for some reason, I seem to be able to fit into their clothes. My late friend Goldie and I, if she's not around, she said, do you really take the measurements mm-hmm. fit into the outfit you fit? So everything Tony makes, she will now say, hmm, I know it's the lady that will come and wear this, this one. So this is her you. actual dress. And this one now is from, ah, she just said I should not mention her name. But <laughs> her initials are TS. Mm-hmm. So this coat here is from TS. You she know, into London. She's in the London right now, okay. balling. I will. Uh-huh. I know. So, so we, I'm fitting into everything. The you, shoes are, you look oh, amazing. Dash. Yeah. You look amazing. You know, I've been chasing you for the longest time to have star. this conversation. I'm yes. finally, I'm happy that you finally just come through and it's about to be a crazy episode. Um, first question, yeah. I've watched a lot of interviews that you've done. You've said this so many times that, I mean, how you grew up, your childhood and everything. But, but for the sake of this episode, right, and this show, can you take us back to like your earliest memory of you growing up in like Ebute Meta? Hmm, that's a good one. Ibutemeta, Lago Meji, Bonuwe. Shout out to all my Ibutemeta fanatics in the building. Mm-hmm. I used to always wear two watches because, you know, Alago Meji. Alago Meji. Is that what it means? Watches. So it means two clocks. That's why I wear two watches. Even Sheilo, the comedian, shout out to you. Mm-hmm. Always, he's got two wristwatches on all the time. Anyway, away from that. You see, Ibutemeta, for me, did not even start from my grandma's house as everyone assumed, which is, you know, the very popular place that I'll take pictures mm-hmm. and I shared a lot of my story. I... Started living in Ibutimeta, Allah Gomeji, the bus stop itself, very close. The house was there with my uncle. So by the time I got admission into secondary school, which, this was like 1990, 1991. I don't know where you were then, which is fine. I was in heaven. Yeah. <laughs> so, now so then, see me, I go stay with my uncle, though. And uh, my parents couldn't afford my fees at the time. So they just needed me, you know, not necessarily out of the picture, but, you know, go stay with a family member and, you know, you can go to school from there and whatnot. But I didn't know what I was getting myself into. Because you see, my uncle that I stayed with, well, I would say it kind of strengthened my resolve, but I was the errand boy, I was the butler, I was the cleaner, I was the gardener, and they had a son who was in command. So now he was bullied a lot in school. So he would not come back and transfer the aggression on me. You know, so that kind of... I wouldn't say, because I couldn't react, I couldn't do much, it always made me feel weak. Because he would come back. They would beat him in school, though. Then he'll come back and I'll do all the punishments. You know that angle night that you put the mm. mission on your hand and you squat by the way. At times he'll draw something on the wall and say, I should push it. So one time I was cleaning it. Oh my the guy whipped me belt. <laughs> you know, that's aside. And then um their mom, <laughs> my aunt, wow. I would get up in the morning at four. And then the first, because the house was quite long, you know, this old mm. archaic vintage yeah, yeah. Yaba houses. Yeah. But you know, I mean refined. Yeah. I would sweep the whole house. Then I'll wash, scrub up, then I'll wipe with cloth, then I'll polish. The polishing was the part I hated the most because the house saying, hey! Then I'll polish, then I have to get ready for school. And then most times, I'm at the bus stop, you know, trying to hitch a ride because, you know, at times I might not get money. So every time I went to school, I was usually broke, but I just, for some reason, I knew there was always free transport. And then coming back, we had those buses, Molwares, you know, the big, so I used to really hide. So mm. once we get to Alagome, I just say, Alagome, you will just jump out. I used to, I could jump out of moving buses and whatnot. But then, still staying there, Writing Junior Waek, something happened in the house and they kicked me out at midnight. So I had to sleep at the filling station, which is at, everyone knows that filling station at Alagomeji. I showered at the car wash and I went back to school, wrote my exams. I was going to have it, I cleared all my papers. Five A's, six C's, no P, no F. Because people were asking, which one is C, which one is P, which one is F? That time, now I own that, what did they do that time? And then we now found my grandma's house in the same Ibutimeta. 
by then, my parents had, you know, there was like a reversal of fortunes. You mm. know, they needed to now move to the family house. Right. So I now moved in with them at the same time, thinking, oh, finally, I'm out of my uncle's house. I mm. didn't know. <laughs> this one, we are the enter. Family house, I don't wish it for anyone. Uh, that was the big, from the, you know, frying pan to fire. And then from like, I was not even torn between the devil and the deep blue sea. That was like the real deep blue sea. Because I was the only guy in that house with all my cousins, plenty of female cousins. And for some reason, they just, I don't know, they just made us feel unwelcome from day one, you know. Um, I mean, my dad had the right to live in that house because it was yeah. his father's house. Right. You know, but then my dad was really cool every day, but they didn't do it to his face. But I mean, they were always doing... St- mm-hmm. So now the only person to now transfer the aggression and aside from the kids, myself and my younger sisters, was my mom. But they underestimated my mom. Because she said, that my mom went up be Niger. Mm-hmm. Then look, this Indian woman. And you know, that's Indian woman. Eh? My mother became an Agbero overnight. She would fight because every time they had to beat us up, you know, they started calling my sisters prostitutes even before they attained These were like age. cousins. Cousins, who, like blood cousins. Now, my dad's older brother's kids who are older than myself. You know, right. my dad is like, a, they're twins. So, Taiwo Kende, Idu Alaba. My dad is Alaba. He's the last. These are Kende's kids. I'm not going to mention their names because we're not giving them props. I bet and wish and go. <laughs> but then, at that point, my sisters, obviously, where, you know, they, we all look different. Yeah. So now I was taunted every day. I'm the one disgracing the family. Why am I dressing this way? And I was in school at the time, you know. I just wanted to just finish school and get to work. I also started teaching when I was in SS3. So whilst writing junior work, I was teaching because my dad had lost his job. Of course, they taunted us in that house so much because my dad lost his job. And my mom was working four jobs. A foreigner that she was teaching. Now, here's the crazy part. The school my mom was teaching in was owned by Joro Muffin's mom. And I was Joro's teacher. How about that? Joro. That's some history right Joro there. Joro Muffin. I, I remembered sorting out his report card. And his mom, God bless her soul. She's late now. She said, ah, my son didn't pass. Ah. My mother was like, am I going to alter this score? Or I will not collect salary. I said, hey, ma, he tried, but <laughs> she said, fix it. Ah, I want to fix it. Though. You... Ah, you, because you didn't collect salary. Oh, well, I mean, Joro had to go, travel abroad pee. for school and whatnot. So his dad was more like a permanent fixture because his dad was the one handling the school at the time. Right. You know, his mom went, was ill for a bit. But you know, let me not digress. So my mom eventually became the headmistress of the school. And, you know, that way I was able to bring other, you know, young stars like myself who had just finished secondary school and were just idling away at mm. home. So we're all teaching in the school. But I did a lot of private lessons just to get extra money. You know, whilst my dad was hunting for a job, you know. And, you know, my mom would come back every day. She's stressed. And if she passes the front, they would do it on purpose. They know when my mom closes. So my cousins would lock the back door. So my mom would have to go to the front and press the bell. Because if you're pressing from the back, you know, these family houses now, the back is, we had like shops. So you won't really hear when someone is knocking. So once they open the door and see my mom, they'll just slam it back on her face. They'll not start, you know, oyi boyi, I am a tanga. That, I mean, I remember one of my cousins telling my mom, and I remember this so vividly, that look at you. You this um, wretched Indian that, I mean, is it not you that they used to fuck under your husband's car for five, five naira and ten, ten naira? I'm telling you. You know, when I remember these things, the most hurtful part was that I couldn't fight them. Yeah. Because the day I now decided to take it upon myself to fight. Oh, no! They all gathered. Five of these girls on environmental sanitation there and they beat me with like those masquerade whips in front of the house. Because how old are you then? I, I was in second, I was in SS3. You know, I, I shared this story one time, mm-hmm. you know, and everyone flooded my comment section and they were insulting me. Why couldn't I fight back? But for crying out loud, if we had fought back, please, where were we going to go? And my sisters were really young at that mm-hmm. point. So it was just, there was just so much going on. And then even the church, you know, because my dad was in the choir, we we're also in the choir. They also took our matter to church. So they excommunicated me from church, you know. And, you know, my mom was going to MFM. So the first day I now followed my mom to MFM. The first, the senior pastor came to me and said, Sister, when next you come to church, cover your hair. And my mother slapped me, Daddy. You see what I'm saying? Like, now you be the sister. Yeah, yeah now maybe the sister. They say, Sister, uh, when next you come with your mom, cover your hair. I we just pray that my mother will not hear that. When my mother heard, which, and my mama, eh, she twists my ear from that Iwaya to Onike bus stop. You know, and anyway, away from all of that, I think majority of my strength, resilience, resolve, and, you know, um, inner strength as well came from my mom. For somebody who did not know anyone in Nigeria. She came through. Things were rosy at first. My dad was doing good. I mean, there was like a reversal of fortunes. As I said, he lost a lot. And then she now had to, you know. And that woman, I back her children overnight. And then staying in that kind of house every day. Now, no jokes. It was every single minute. Now, if we want to shower, we have to get up very early in the morning. Because you're, to quickly step out on the corridor so that none of your cousins are around. 
And then once they start, they'll just start singing my mother. She learned every fella song. Once they are singing, my mother too will start her own. Basket, my don't start to leak again. I'll be like, hey, my mother started. But she was Indian. Yes. My mom learned, like, she, I, I don't know how she did it. I remember one day she came out. My cousins had taunted her so much. They opened <laughs> the door. They threw a slip at her. She was on the bed. Because the room, you know, you could, you know, face me, I face you now. My mother came out with two bottles and broke on each wall, packed and said, oh yeah, come. 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 At the hospital, my mother even said she had a gun. Where is my gun? They will now run. I see them. What? And these girls were all in secondary school, just so you know. Why did they get off? Why did they get a high from just taunting you guys? Well, obviously, they just felt we did not, they didn't need us in that house. We we're infringing on their space. And this is somebody that they had glorified so much. You know, my dad was in Europe at the time, in Germany. Mm. So there was news with, oh, this man in Germany, you know, a ah, married Indian woman, their mm. son is so fine. We come to Nigeria, they idolize us so much. And then it's like a reversal of fortune. And for the eye, they don't see us finish. Yes. So look at you. And then we also had another uncle. We have an uncle, by the way, Uncle Wally. Shout out to him. Um, he was the commissioner for finance at that time during um, Tinubu's regime. Mm. So he would come to the house just briefly. You know, and then he was now the new, like, yo, I don't know. Ah, yeah. Uncle Wally is coming. They would tell us to leave the parlor. Leave, 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 leave. Uncle Wally is coming. Leave the parlor. Leave the parlor. Ah, I say, hey, hey. So Uncle Wally would visit and he would bring like hampers for my grandma and my cousins. Hey, you know, so it was just so crazy to see how, you know, how people shift. Yeah, but... That when you come to our house back then in Agbara Estate, you people would be, to even touch me, was yeah. like, but then every minute, you know, so, and I would just say, I've never said this anywhere, you know, we sat down and I just felt like my mom needed to leave the country because my mom, my hair was thinning out, you know, I could see it. She mm. couldn't say it, but she was aging quick. She was stressed. She was, and then she took out her anger on all of us. And I, and now I can understand that. So I take it in good stride. But she was frustrated, you know. And we just sat down, and I, that's when I started hustling so much. And I was like, you know what? You need to travel back to Mauritius. Her passport had expired. My um, cousins had burnt her recent passport, so they just felt like she was ah. stuck. <laughs> Welcome to my world. Reality check. So we gathered money, and then I remember reaching out to my uncle, and he just came and he footed everything immediately. His son is, um, by the way, um, um, Tommy Waedun. Right. Yeah, who was on Adventures of Merlin. Mm. Yeah. So we just, you know, he just came to and said, Anita, what do you need? He could see it. He didn't need to say it. He didn't want to put him out. You know, like, this is, mm. you know, I don't live here. You know, but he just said, Anita, what do you need? So, we, you know, my mom said, he just bought her ticket. My mom traveled with an expired passport. We all had to go to the airport. At the point, they had to take her passport to like several places, you know. My mom was already frustrated at the airport. She even started even aging the more like, you know, so we had to call this person, call that person. My uncle placed the call and she boarded the flights, you know, and then I just said, don't worry about coming back anytime soon. Leave this to me, you know. So that was what pushed me and I said to myself, I am going to be the one that God will single-handedly take out of this family to not only change the narrative, break the chains of poverty and just take everyone to the next level. Hallelujah. So, Ra -koto. Yeah. Sorry, I know I just you did that. You know, went through. Yeah. You did that. I, I, I did that. I don't did that. I'm so yes. proud. I'm so it's, Thank it's, you. it's amazing. You know, it, I'm you mentioned something about being different. I know yeah. I know you're biracial, right? And I understand how, what that difference already does to you, True. right? Also that you have so many features that and qualities that make you very different from the rest of your peers. Well said. When did you realize as a child that you know what? I'm actually really different from the rest of this lot. So hmm. When it just dawned on you that, you know what? I'm different. I'm going to accept my difference. I think even like, right, right from primary school, though, you know, um, when I was in primary school, because I went to Federal Government College, Janiki, the staff school, mm. I thought when I finish, I will get right into Federal Government College, Janiki, you know. So I just thought, you know, my parents were doing good. I felt, you know, that's where they would transport me to. But like I said, we were living in this mansion. My dad lost everything. We now moved into an uncompleted building, which is another story for another day. So I had to now go and stay with my uncle so I could attend St. Gregory's College, which was government-owned at that yes, time. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. So from primary school, you know, I was just, you know, I just knew I was just different because I was like the only mm. mixed race human in the class. But, mm. you know, everyone was, you know, doing their thing. I just would style my hair differently. And then, you know, my dad used to be a DJ back in Europe. So, you know, Niger guy traveled to Germany. He was like, um, he was working in restaurants. And then at night, he was an underground DJ. So we had a lot of all those Boniem classics, mm -hmm. Jim Reeves, Harry Belafonte. I grew up on all that music back then. Gloria Gaynor, mm. Whitney Houston, but more of like Euro disco, Euro pop. Right. And because it's very upbeat and tempo, I was, you know, and my dad had a lot of fella too. So I would always be jumping, you know, on the bed and, you know, with big headphones, screaming, singing out loud. I loved ABBA so much. Ah, our neighbors would be like, they forgive me because, mm, 
Alaba's son. Oh, he's just enjoying himself. So at that point, I just knew my taste was different because I liked a certain kind of music which I was exposed to at very young. Mm-hmm. I didn't know what it was going to do for me. Mm. And then when I got into secondary school, I had only one uniform at the point in time, actually. And my auntie purposely bought cream. It was, you know, St. Gregory's College is white, but they bought me cream. So every day they punished me for dirty uniform. And I would explain, this uniform is clean. <laughs> but I couldn't afford, I didn't know how to get a new one because it was sewn and it was like off-white. So they always right. thought I was dirty. Yes. Every morning, so they, I would kneel from the gate. I know St. Gregory's College from gate into the school compound, if far. I go crawl, crawl, crawl. My knees were always great. But anyway, away from that, I just knew there was just something different about this kid. But because I was oppressed so much and suppressed as well, I was scared to, you know, I didn't know what to express. I didn't know what to do exactly. Mm. Which is why when people actually think that, you know, when people look at me and they, let's go into like my freaky side, they'll think, mm-hmm, this is an from small, you don't spell. Mm. Actually, I was a late bloomer. I didn't start exploring until like, after university, yes, I'm telling you, mm. you know, yeah, actually, after uni, yes, after uni, I think it was when I started working at Sound City and I started getting a lot of attention from mm. different people. That's when, okay, I was like, okay. So even in school, for some reason, even people who try to, you know, not necessarily make advances because mm. I went to an old boys school, but yeah. just mm, mm. this person, what's your story? Yeah, It wasn't, it was more people pitied me. So it was more of, He's so skinny and scrawny, and his uniform is always dirty, mm-hmm. and he's so tiny. And I was very smart. Then guess what? My shoes were oversized because they said I have to grow into the shoes. Right. So from SS1, you know Kito sandals now. Mm-hmm. The Kito was oversized. I'm a size 38, I'm um, size 40. They bought me 42 so that when he go reach me, enter SS3. Mm. So I no go change the shoe. Yeah. Ah, the Kito. And then Kito was prohibited in the school. So, ah, uh, every There's day, so from SS1 on. to 3, except when I got to SS3 and, you know, they wanted to give me perfect title, but I wanted to come out with good grades, so I kind of rejected that. <laughs> I just won all the debates and whatnot. So I just knew that there was just something extra, extra about me in a way, but I just mm. still couldn't tap into it until 1994 when I was in SS1 and I got to go to NTA for Key Division 101, which is like that nationwide soap opera that was on NTA Network then. Yeah. My first role, I think I was 11, 12. First paycheck was 150 naira. But it was when I got there. You know that thing. You're there with so many schools from the island. Holy mm-hmm. child, cheers, cheers. Even Adrao, which is just beside NTA. You know, those ones were forming paparazzi at that point. And I said, what are we even doing here? And then, you know, the producer comes. They look around. Then they see me with my coily hair. You come. They give me a script. Read. Ah. <laughs> it is so. So you see, my solace back then, my escape, I read everything I could lay my hands on. Mm. Books, literature, newspapers, journals, and whatnot. So, vocab, sharp. So when they gave it to me, tiny boy, I was all reading through. Fru- ah, you man looked at me. How old are you again? Okay, he's got in the role. All of you can go. Maybe look, you know, even at that time, self, oh, oh, we secondary school, everybody eye me. <laughs> and Annie Macaulay back then came to audition because she was living in Legico then. So it was like a year after, I think when she was in SS2, SS3, she now got roles on Division 101, but that's another story for another day. So I landed the first role. Now what, this is what I did. They gave me the script to take home. I was shaking. I got home and I learned everybody's parts. So when we're shooting, I'll be shouting, no, that line is wrong. And <laughs> Over like, shh, 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 no. Who is this boy? So last, last, from that role, minor role, I did a lot of minor roles, and they now gave me a major role. I, got, I became the highest paid kid actor on that show. They were paying me 800 naira per episode, which is four Mondays in a month, because the show was broadcast every Monday. 3,200 naira in 1994, 95, 96, no, sorry, 96, 97, because I finished secondary school in 97. So it was not so bad. It wasn't bad because I was bringing mm. that money home. But then, NT at the time, if you shoot January, you collect your money in June. <laughs> so the money used to accumulate, accumulate. Yeah. I didn't have an account then. So it was my dad's. I just told my dad, I'll be paying this money into your account. But I don't know, see, the day where I find out, see, my papa, they, then, they, then they finger this money. Ah, I fought with my prayers. <laughs> now that's another thing I regret doing back then because I felt like I was becoming my own man. Yes. I was becoming independent. Mm. My dad was out of a job. And we're feeding on my money, so I lashed out big time. Yeah. This is my mama. My, my mother used to plan me in the night. Now, Indian woman, once you sleep, 3 a.m., she'll now wake you up. Really? Really? Once I wake up, pa, pa, pia, pia. She my did mother that. had nails. She'll scratch, cha, cha. Ya, what? Ya. She had become so Nigerian by the she time. Become, oh, my mother used to have good price. In the market, once she goes to Yaba market, the sellers, they just cover. Uh, we know sell. <laughs> yeah. like, we know sell. They said this, Oimbo. Ah. My mother was saying she would price and price, you know. So, I mean, looking back now, I mm. think from secondary school, when I got my first big break on TV, I didn't know what it was at the time. 
And then they now featured me on um, TV Guide, which is equivalent to DSTV Guide. Mm. It was TV Guide back then for local terrestrial TV. And they put me right beside Regina Askia. And they wrote Veteran Kid Actor. I mean, so that's why I'm, you know, me and Regina Askia like this. Eh? Ah, I know they use Amata play because she, I idolize her so much. Mm. I just felt there was a level of expressiveness. I don't give a shit. I don't give two F you think it's about two people, you know, and which is why I would always say it any day, any time. I tapped, you know, some elements from her essence. I had seen her in person and I was so scared to even walk up to her because Regina would drive with her red Jeep back somewhere and would not come out for 30 minutes and everybody would be waiting. She was hey, a star, that star she, no, they, she would not come out because they, they were scared. If she doesn't come out, she drives us. Ah, we're in trouble. Like, they used to beg her to come out. So she'd be in the car. Then when she's coming out, she puts one leg out. First, for five minutes, you, I see, love the, it. you see the shoes. So the first day they took me to her, you know, she opened, removed her glasses, stared at me with her brown eyes. And who are you? I said, oh. I didn't even know what to say. I was just <laughs> starstruck. I wanted to show the magazine and on the cover, which she didn't even pay attention. She just moved. So there was just something about that air of mystery. And, you know, and then growing up, now we're really good friends. I always drum it into her every time. Like, madam, we watched you growing up, oh, you know. And um, another person who I also, you know, picked elements from was mm. um, Fumi Oda, yeah. who would ask people questions like she's known them all her life. I didn't know I was going to toe that line. Yeah. So I think for me, one variable that will stop your growth in life is the fear of looking stupid to other people. And I felt like if I was going to look stupid, you know what? I would do it gracefully, effortlessly, and shamelessly. And here we are today. But you, On tea with tea. Please let me sip tea. <laughs> this sip, 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 sip. It's about to go down. I'm sorry. I'm, I hope I'm not talking too much. No, no, no. I like it. It's I you like now. it. I ah. like it. But you, but you know, kids that usually are that expressive at that age, yeah. usually have a lot of love and acceptance from their family. Mm -hmm. What was your relationship like with your parents? Beyond all the things <gasps> that was happening, right? Was there a lot of love? I mean, beyond the fact that, you know, that happened to your dad and your mom had to pick up yeah. the slack. What was the relationship like between your family? It was lost love. I'm not going to lie. It wasn't... Um, because my mom was caught up in so much. Mm. You know, foreign woman who had, you know, traveled down. My mother even stopped wearing heels. That's when I knew there was something wrong. Like, you know, this, you know, Indian woman, long hair. Mm. You know, she's come to Nigeria. She's not working. Her husband is doing things. She's just traveling the world, buying things. And then now she now has to hustle. So... I think I was on, right? on the receiving end of my mother's transfer of aggression. Mm. My dad is more chill because every time we, we had issues in the house and my cousins would, you know, rally around, my dad would always say, leave them to God. My mother would fight back. You know, so I felt like my mother was expending too much energy, you know, and she couldn't really show. I, again, it could be her background. You know, I don't know what went on mm. with that, mm. but it, 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 it wasn't expressive at mm. all, which is why I'm very close with my sister because I said to myself, I will try and fix this. Right. It's going to take a lot from me, but I will do what I can, you know? And there was, it wasn't an atmosphere of, oh, I want to. Ugh. It was difficult. There was just too much going on. There are days that, you know, we'll try and maybe cook in the kitchen because kitchen is like another division of the house. So maybe my mom puts pepper on the fire and then maybe she runs into the room to get Maggie. Before you come back, you see flame. Somebody would have cooked. Ha! Do it. And you now see it in the... Hey, so, ah, this is the commotion at this state. No, Fuji has is maybe at least at the end of the day, they lived in unison. Yeah. Then go fight, fight, fight. They come together. This one, just, you just never know. And then there are times they just get up in the morning and then they will shut the toilets. And then you are pressed. You want to do number two. Huh? I'll now have to do it in Lylon and throw it to the next company. Next thing, next <laughs> company, they now built church there. So they were there every day. They will throw the Lylon back. For me, part of my trauma. I, because I like to think I'm like an anxious avoidant, was the fact that I had to fend for not only myself, but for everyone at a very young age. And yes. this was from like 10, 11. Mm. So I just was driven with the need to, okay, you know what? I need, I think I'm the one who's going to get this family out of these states. How do I start? What do I do? You know? And so at that point, I was working, doing so much. I didn't have a regular childhood. I played ball on the streets. I chased, you know, paper canoes in the gutter. Mm. Yeah, but it was rare. You know, because even... My neighbors are cross. I would go to the house to play. Their mother would come and say, don't come near my children again. Don't come to this house again. So Why? Time I had to, my dear, I, I don't know if my cousin said something. I was regarded as some sort of outcast again because, you know, it felt like, ugh, they didn't, you know, we don't yeah. want you in this house. So you're not welcome. So you can't be welcome in my house too. There were times when even neighbors would come and, you know, meet my cousin and say, can you people leave this woman alone? That's my mom. Mm. People, they said, don't put my house. What, kilo coin, kilo coin. 
you know, ah, I remember one time my cousin and I got into a heated argument. I was cleaning the gutter, every environmental sanitation. And then my, you know, my dad's car had packed up. So one of my cousins would just come near me. Kalo, kalo, ka. And then she would go. Kalo, kalo, ka. You know? And then I remembered even one of my cousins from outside, God knows where, who gave him the audacity and liberty to say this. They had an issue with my youngest sister, who is now, now the one after me is the radical. She's the one with the tattoo. She's rebellious. So she fought back. But the youngest one was just under my shadow, you know. And then one of my cousins came, made her kneel and said, look at you. My sister was about 15 at the time. No, she was still in secondary school in SS2. I said, look at you. Even if they give me 100 naira to fuck you, I would not even do that. Pardon my French, but these are things that, you know. So you imagine said, so, yeah. getting this back to back. You know, there was a time they even thought my youngest sister was pregnant. So my cousins used to punch her belly. You know, that, yeah, they thought she was pregnant. Like, eh, we want to hide the pregnancy. You know, ah, this was, by then my mom had traveled. So I was just really holding you know, it down the fourth floor. I was holding it down and I was really, um, like my brain was like in a roller, it was like a roller coaster for me. I need to get everyone out of this house as quickly as possible. I need yeah. to work. So for me, I didn't get to live life the way I would, which is why now, if I wake up in the morning, I do the things I want to do, I wear what I want to wear. It's because I could not do those things mm. back then. There was no time to. So would I say now I'm getting love and affection and attention from my parents? Now the roles have it's been reversed. reversed. My dad stays with me. My mom is in Dublin now. Yeah. You know, I've said, you know, my mom, do your thing. Don't, you don't, I will, I will handle all of this. And I made sure that my sisters went to private universities. A move I later regretted. Because <laughs> at the time I was working at South City, <laughs> when they kicked my ass to the curb, I couldn't pay the fees anymore. So I had to hustle extra, you know, to pay that. But I didn't get. All of that affection, attention, mm. affectionate love that I would have wanted. And I can understand it now, which is the kind of parent I would never want to be mm. when I'm ready for children. Ah. Mm. So anyway, but that's this, that. This, let me not These digress. things didn't take a toll on you because it's yes. one thing to have this driving you. But it's also a part of you that's just yearning for. Yes. I was yearning for that. Mm -hmm. Because you've seen other people, that other yeah. people, like you, you can tell a child that was raised in love. I always assume that I really had to have been, I've been raised in love because what? his energy is very different. I it was it was just I had to find myself. I mean, I found myself at a really young age, but then it also affected my relationships and entanglements more or less because now I am always seeking solace, love, affection. I take, so I audition a lot for people. I people please so much because mm. I want to win you over. I didn't get this when I was a lot younger. So I'm mm. like, you have to, for you to be in my life, a long parent. I forgot how special I was mm. and all the light and love I would bring into your life. Rather, it was this about, don't go. Yes. Stay. Yes. What do you want? The last, <laughs> whatever it is I was enamored in, blood of Nebuchadnezzar. And then I sat down. This was like recent, you know, like maybe a year ago. And I thought to myself, ah, how long will I continue to people please? Audition for attention, hustle for affection, you know. And for me, I now became a little forceful. Because I wanted it so much, I felt like, you're with me. Why are you not giving it to me? Because I'm giving this to you. Why am mm. I not getting it back? But I realized on resolved trauma, this is from back in the day. So mm -hmm. I might as well just let that relax, mm -hmm. focus on myself more, throw all the love my way and to my family members. And then again, I kind of abandoned my siblings in a way. My siblings also, we all stayed together. But I felt like I was a bit hard. Hustle your also because mm. you don't know what I did to get here. Mm. So you cannot, no, no, no. Yes, I'm here for you, but I beg, enter streets yeah. and do your thing as mm. well. I know that it, this, was, this conversation was going to go like this, but I didn't yeah. know it was going to go this way. Um, but you know what's interesting is how you are, you, you are able to maintain this front regardless of all the things that you have been mm. through. I'm curious about St. Gregory's. Um, what was it like? Were you trolled? <laughs> Because you're very different. And I imagine going I to an all-boys school. I went to an all-boys school, right? Ah. And once you can spot a difference, yes. they would try to of course. come I, for you. I think um, the earlier stages from my from early junior secondary school, I was, of course, the usual bullying. But you see, again, I was also lucky. Because, like I said, I was scrawny and skinny. My uniform was oversized. My keto sandals were oversized. You know, with my curly hair. And I was very good with English and literature. So mm. we kind of struck a balance. The ones... Um, who liked maths would always say, you know, I'll teach, yeah. you, I'll write your essay for you. I was very good writing essays, sharp, sharp. As we're sitting at the exam, I'll write like three essays, but then you do my maths for me. But now, here's the thing. I'm, I mean, I love my school. I love my alma mater like crazy. I would mm. go back there any day, any time. 
I got a lot of unnecessary attention that I couldn't handle, mm. that I didn't know what to do. So I remember one scenario, you know, it's so weird. You know, I reached out to the person on Facebook. I, I think, you know, he's married now, whatnot. But you see, back then in school, this person was a transfer student. So again, like I said, I was just, you know, that's quiet mouse, you know. People knew me in school. So now people who know me now, my set, are like, whatever happened to Derele from back then? Mm. Ah, you know, we knew this Derele, you know, always in class good with his English and literature and, you know, whatnot. So the first point of, um, would I say, enter streets was when this transfer student came in. And then every day he would write on the board, you know, I'm in love with Derele. Every morning we'll come to school and sit. I could, I didn't know how to handle that. I was, hey, I say, hey, wala wuli me. And then this person was bold with it, like, you know, oh, and then he fought till we became seat partners. You know, and then at that point, I couldn't afford desk and chair. When I had one in GSS, one, they now stole it. So oh, now you were buying your own. We, desk. Yeah, we had to. I noticed at that time, now school, now uh, St. Gregory's, now you know, government on before. Now it's a missionary school. Right. So then bring your, you know, bring all your whatever. Things, yeah. So they stole mine from GSS one D. So from GSS two and three, I was perching, perching, perching. You know, seat partner. So eventually, we became seat partners with this person. But you see, I now felt like okay, this is a different kind of affection. Mm. I don't quite get it. But then. I'm not getting it from my house. You know, right. there's so much going on. And that was when we were in a family house. Mm. But who is, and he was a rich kid. So for me, he would, you know, he would buy stuff and whatnot. Now these are things that we can speak to our kids to understand. I yes. think for him also, he was going through a phase. He didn't quite understand what was going on. But he was just drawn to me. Yeah. You know, so would go to his house for parties. They used to live in Dolphin Estate then. Wow. Dolphin was like small London for us then. Mm -hmm. ah, mm -hmm. You know, and it, it was just one of those things I just felt, I kind of felt accepted because it was a different, you know, yeah. uh, this was like Crop old people, money and yeah. new money. So I knew that my parents didn't have that, but I felt like, ah, well, I'm here, Sha. So maybe, <laughs> you know, they they notice me somehow. Mm -hmm. like, and, you know, and then when we got into SS, I moved to art, he moved to science. But right. then, you know, we had a large field separating us. He would cross every time. Eventually, he grew out of it, you know. So by the time I was in SS, now, and I now started to, that's when I started, I was on Kid Division 101. Mm -hmm. By then, everyone was watching the show because it was TV. There was no internet at that time. So right, right. everyone in school now knew who I was. I was like very, everyone started to notice. This is from SS1, 1994. I would be on assembly, you know, all the juniors are talking about me and, you know, even the seniors, SS2 and 3, yeah. I was everyone's school son. You know, so you now made me feel, ah, uh -uh. so if I wasn't before, when I'm yes, not seeing you. Yes, yes. Now, now they look me now. Mm. I, I said, well, I was just doing what I, you know, could do and I would trek every morning, all the other girls. And so now, I now became very instrumental in school. Not only was I winning all the debates, but then, if we had to go to like female schools, I was the, let Style me call it, school hook, up, hook up guy. Because I could because talk to the girls. Girl. Knew you, the girls knew me. They wanted to talk to me, so I could not talk to them for my friend. It was right. just weird. So now, Interact Club. I was in Cultural and Dramatic. Interact Club, they are doing lists. They really is number one. Really, we are going to we are going to Viva Fowler. We are going to Queen's College. We are going to this. Oh, yeah. We are going to Ebadi Laja. Now, the first person I ever fell in love with, shout out to her, um, I was in SS3 at the time. And she was in SS2. Evadi Laja. We went to Evadi Laja. Mm -hmm. Her name is Kemi Keru. She's married now. I think she's in the UK or the US. I stumbled on her Instagram recently. So it's so weird. I fell hook, line, sinker. Everybody knew I was in. Ah! Everybody was saying, you must introduce us to our friends. And, you know, it was just weird. We, we eventually reconnected afterwards. Now, what made me now fight my parents? Valentine's Day. I could see all my other friends doing CHS. We used to call it car hire service then. Mm -hmm. They would just rent the 504, 505. You know, go to the school. Buy the girl chocolates and what? Secondary so, school students? Yes. Yeah, so, so now that time, SS3, I had made money from Kid Division 101. So I just told my dad, I need so so amount of money. I want to get CHS from Ikoi Club. I want to go to Evadilaja in um, Bariga, pick up. My father said, oh, oh, what was, what? He didn't understand. What, 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 what was that? I, I said, and also, I, I know we got into a fight. There was no money, obviously, because we went to the bank. We got into a scuffle. I was rude to him at the bank. Bank managers were wondering, why is this child shouting? You know, I didn't get it. I understand now, now, mm. you know, but then I didn't cry because I also wanted to buga for school. There was yes. also that need to be seen, be heard, be recognized. It was, but it also still wasn't enough to now prove my masculinity at the time. Because, I, I mean, I was like, we had a lot of eff effeminate, mm -hmm. you know, young boys at that time. And I look back now, now I can say, you know, we effeminate people, we are the authors of culture, we know mm. what's in, what's out, what's trending yes, and what's yes. not. We have the final say, but in secondary school and all boys school, it's like a lot of toxic yes, masculinity. Yes, yes. So I had to learn a sport. Now, there was crickets. They said crickets, you know, St. Gregory's and crickets, we are five and six. They're like, no, no, you can't learn cricket. So, I now had to learn taekwondo and judo because every time they used to use me to fight karate. 
you know, they would slam me. Every, I was in light test, so, so I now had to, you know, learn that, you know, where I could. And I, guess what? I learned it out of self-defense. In the house I was living in, I could not chat beat my cousins. I knew I could beat them, but I couldn't get into that. Yes. You know, so I would just say overall, again, I was protected. I never really got punished. Mm -hmm. You know, I never got molested, which is amazing. Mm. I was never harassed. I was just, they would just throw me subtle hints. I, I just, I would just smile and just be shy, you know. And I, I think they also come here and just pity me. They used to call me poor Indian at that time until I started. Poor, poor Indian? Indian. I, mm, from junior secondary school. You know kids are the, are the wicked. Are the wicked. I, especially, <laughs> so you know when you now want to belong to a certain clique. So when you're now accepted into that clique, mm. that you have been trying all through GSS1 mm. and in SS, you are in that clique now, mm. hanging out with like the rich kids. But they still let you know that, you know. You're not still one of them. Yeah, no, but you're just here because we see you on TV. What changed when you, when you got into Unilag? What was ah, it like? Unilag was a different ballgame entirely. So from first year, year one, year two, every day, are you a boy or a girl? Now, let me tell you something funny that I discovered. I didn't know they had like rules with like the female hostels. So my best friend at, in school then, Linda, you know, was in New Hall. I mean, I hold she now moved to Moremi. So one morning, we're, year one, we're busy doing registration. Um, the VC's daughter then was my friend. So, uh, Funke Motola, shout out to you, darling. She was now entering more and check her. All of us now strolling. Ah! They didn't even stop us. So, me, I didn't know. Me, I was just entering too. And then, so when I entered, all the other girls now saw me. Ah! What are you doing here? What are you doing? I said, well, what happened? What happened? Ah, this is, this is like 12 noon. Boys are not allowed in on, like, it's 4 o'clock. Yeah. So, I said, I didn't know. Then I said, so everybody now knew. Eh, so you can enter. Ah! All the boys used me. Ta. People go and call my baby. Is it like you not see me in the morning with my folder? I was just strolling. I greet the potters. Good morning. And I enter. Now go and knock on the door. My boyfriend is outside. Ah. So wait, you, <laughs> you, you're so pretty. Yes, I entered female with hotel. The hair. And I used to wear a lot of baggy stuff. Because you know, now another thing is, I felt body shamed all the while because they always called me mal poor Indian, malnourished mm. kid, and whatnot. So because I was tiny, I always had to. Six soles in oversized clothes. I used to wear a little baggy jeans, baggy boots, face cap. Mm. Then my hair, I was also a bit worried about letting it loose because mm. I felt I would look mad. Mm. So now in school now, it was also different because, let me even share this. I've never said this anywhere. I got harassed in a lecturer's office. Exactly. What the I lecturer was thought I was a girl. Yes. And it was one of those courses that, you know, one of those general courses. I'm not going to say the course name. So they asked us to submit our assignments and then they now said, um, they said, me, I should submit my own tomorrow. I said, thank God, though. They even gave me time. Because, you know, as an educationist, if you're mm. studying English education, you do in both. Yeah, yeah go to arts, go to education. Yes. So it was, it was very Electives tedious. and everything. Going, yeah. And then we might have 8 to 10 in education. Then now 10 to 11 arts. So you're scrambling for campus shuttle or you have to walk or run. And, I mean, I didn't have a car at the mm -hmm. time. So one of those times, I wrote this, you know, paper. And then every time I wanted to submit, the lecturer said, don't worry, come. And he ah, said, hey, ah, this lecturer is nice. So one day I went. And he... I was like, so I want to say, oh, fine girl, come in. So I was stuck. Hey, if I now say I'm not fine girl, these spots <laughs> are filled it. So I entered, ah, well done, sir. Ah, ah, drop it, you know. And then, you know, he was just inching close. I said, hey, they me by millennial. If I should say, because already, he was already coming on. Not, not too strong, but, you know, I could, you know, I could fail. And I, we had heard gist about this particular lecturer. So I said, I've entered this one today. So, I was like, so how do I handle this now? I can't tell anyone, obviously. Mm. And I can't tell him up front. Ah, I'll be brought, so step back. And of course, I feel that cost. From now, I'll be writing the cost in now, sir. So I'll just, by the door, doing like, in my me was <laughs> I don't remember the nick of the priest's I was just standing there. I said, sorry, sir. I just, it's a drop in there. How are you? Ah, how old are you? Just, you know, and it was coming close. And then he said the funniest thing ever. I can never forget that line. <laughs> and after that, I'm not going to say anything again. Just say, ah. So he now he says, sit, sit on my lap. I said, I'm okay. And then he just stood in front of me and said, oh, yeah, come, come, yeah, come and make it go down. I say, sir, can you hear? He said, I should buy your bar. I said, make it go, make it go down. So I, you know, I, I was, I was scared. I was really frantic. I was perplexed. Everything was like roller coaster of emotion. So I just said, I will come back, I will come back. He said, oh, yeah, go and your mother, the man, she be king, yeah, he left Fajeju. Like, you know, me, I'm yeah. acting all mm, sense. No sense. So when I came out, see, eh, everybody that greeted me, I didn't answer. I was just walking down the art corridor, walking till I go to the car park. I was, and then when I go to the car park, now that's another reality for me. Marie boys every day decided that I'm the, so they, they used to throw me pure water and eggs. So that day was the egg throwing day. 
because they used to throw pure water. Hey, they no, call they, me all names. They, they, they did it to me. The F word, the G word. Like, hey. mm. I think my they used to call me Miss Marire because I stayed in Marire <laughs> in year one. So one morning, though, I caught me, don't you bath in the bathroom because I was in the SGG governor's room, president's room. Mm. So he had his own personal yes, bathroom. Yes. So I was lucky. But then, everything you ask, you don't need to bath in the bathroom. I said, no. Ah. <laughs> so I left the Marire and started coming from my house. Mm. So I was on the queue. Ah, boys came out. They were insulting me, insulting, insulting. Next thing, the water started. Me, I said, people will not know what is doing me. I was just standing there. And then I was about to enter, board the bus. And then one person had this, it, you know, the last seat. So I had to wait in line again. Ah, they now brought eggs. So I felt like it was like shame from the, whatever, that the episode that happened in the lecturer's office, the professor's office. Right. And then now this, I just went home. After when I got home. So I was always saddled with so much. And there was mm. never anybody to talk to. If I was in your shoes and I was getting trolled and, and, and harassed like that, I probably would have changed just to blending. But for mm. some reason, I, I, can, I have pictures, or I've seen pictures from way back in Unilag. Your originality has been intact since that time. Why you not change? We say people, they say, you know what, this boy's like that. Your hair still up, You're, like you were still dearly. The brand, like yeah. the daily brand has not changed over the years. It's still original. It's just refined why, now. Why didn't you say, you know what, so that I can just survive this lifetime mm. in Nigeria? Oh, let me just fit in. Because you always stood out. I got you. I think also, um, I had limited resources at the time. So I had like two shirts, three jeans that I used to remix and wear back to back. But then when I used to get a lot of negative reception anywhere, I remember, oh, there was even a time in school, you know, like just by that Senate building area. Mm. Maybe my friends are sitting. I want to say hi. People refuse to shake me. I don't shake homosexuals like you. Ah, I'm sorry, I put my hand down. Jehovah. So then I couldn't handle that then. I just, I would be so burnt. I just put my hand down. Ah, sorry. Mm. You know that kind of thing? Because again, you like, you don't know who is who. So I just, ah, I just didn't, I just wanted to just avoid stress. Now, again, for me, it hits me when, you know, I, I will walk in from the gates and maybe I'm walking down to main campus and then, you know, cars will stop and they will insult. Look at you. You are a disgrace. You are a disgrace. And then they will stone, they will throw something out of the car. So I got that every time. And I just felt, well, they must really acknowledge my existence. Then they now started beefing me in all those magazines. There was this popular magazine named Beef. You know, the first headline, they really so stupid, he thinks like a girl. And they circulated it in class. When I go to class, it was like, <laughs> yeah. I just see that. You know, and then there are times, again, in education, I wrote all my courses outside. Even if a class is eight and I get there at 7.30, once the lecturer enters, the first person they look for is me. You, out. All my exams, tests. And I'm writing for Linda. Too. Why? So I'm writing the two. And they just hated the sight of, I don't know. And even when we had to do teaching practice, I remember that everybody was getting Suruleri, Akoka, Yaba. They sent me to Ijechate do Grammar School, Okota. It's like every time that I hear your stories and things that, even people that have hurt you in the past, like it's like a gluten for punishment. Ah, mm. don't, these things don't break you. <laughs> Well, I, I mean, I'm human. Oh, they didn't break you. They did break me at the time. Because I would go home and cry and wonder what I'm doing wrong. But you'll come back again. Yes, and, but I'll come continue. back. Because, I don't know, it was just, I think God just had a narrative for me that you were, that you go come out this your family. For mm. you have to be resilient at it. So I stuck at it. And even, fast forward to even my Sound City days when things were going good, you know, and I was like, you know, I was, once you hear Dearly, once you hear Sound City, Dearly, synonymous with the brand. I remembered one time that, you know, I had a lot of people around me, but they were all suckers. I didn't know. So, you know, people were subconsciously living my life as if, as if it was theirs. I've been burned so many times, right? Yes. Yeah. And I've been trolled. Things have happened to me. And I know that over the years, I've started closing off. Hmm. I've started guarding myself. But over the years, you've experienced more, more harm and yes. more trolling and harassment than even me. Yeah. But for some reason, you're still love and light. Yes. Why? <laughs> Love and light all the time. Um, I would even pick instances of industry colleagues, you know. I remember the... And you see, the thing is, when my friends are doing something, you know, I throw myself into it. I know. Let me give you a very recent scenario. So, when I was going to clock 40, my close friends gathered and said, ah, they want to get me special gifts. And they reached out to a supposed best friend of mine. Like a very close friend, though. This is somebody who, when, you know, they were starting their business, I threw myself in. Like, now, I'm not expecting validation that you must do for me as I did for you. Mm -hmm. So when they call this person, oh, we want to get the really gift, we want to buy him a car. And then she goes, so he doesn't have a car. Why are you buying him a car? For what? I beg, I beg, I beg. You know, and this is somebody who has a lot of money, by the way. Mm. But now, they call other people. People will say, oh, okay, I don't have money to give now, but I'll buy him something else. You know, when I later heard the feedback from all of mm. this, you know, I personally would not have 
acknowledge them because I don't like things that like I don't go meeting other yeah. people. From. No, yeah. no, no, no. Yeah. I can sort my bills myself. But they just wanted to surprise me, you know, mm -hmm. at the end of the day. And they reached out to so many people. That was when they also knew that, hey, so all these people you've been doing things for, or everything now, Ojuaye. Did TV presenting start at Sound City? Yes, it did. Yes. I didn't know that was an industry I was going to get into. I started acting, you know, like I was doing like stage and TV. So mm. the first opportunity I got to meet the CEO of Sound City was through his wife. I met her at the bus stop, Casino Cinema, near Lago Major. She said, come, young man. She just wrote a number. Then GSM just, numbers just came out. I know the number by heart. She wrote on a piece of paper. I called this person. They auditioning for everyday people. I think they might have a role for you. And today we shout out to you. And today we are the by the way. Shout out to her. So I called the number. And the person said, okay, come to... Ogba and come and audition. So they were auditioning for everyday people. Now, here's the thing. I even mentioned it, you know. Um, Kemi Adetiba was one of the VJs with the Sound City Music Channel. And she could pick the shows she wanted to do. You know, I didn't have the liberty to do that. So there was a show that they told her to go and do. And she was like, oh, she can't do it. You know, she, she can't be stressed. And then they now called me. They just called me. Where are you? I was like, ah, I'm in the studio. Which was, because I used to sleep in the office then. I started staying in the office to see if, you know, I wanted to work. You really wanted to. I wanted, yeah. my, I wanted, I wanted to even impress my boss as well. I wanted him yeah. to see reason why he had employed me. I wanted to prove a point. The others were getting it so effortlessly. It just wasn't working for me. I come the one that said, no, be village people. Matter follow me, come here. Mm. So when they called me, I was like, on my way. So I got dressed. This was a Sunday. I didn't know what was happening. I just ran, got into a cab. I used to use this um, Sony Ericsson flip phone then. Mm. In my haste, I forgot the phone in the car. So when I came out, I was like, my phone. I just saw Kemi. Kemi said, hey, I don't know this. And it was like a movie premiere. I think you can do it. I was like, hey. So the producer just said, hey, don't ask me a stupid question. Just go and start. So I now went. This was a movie premiere. The Widow by Kinsley Ogoro. Stella Damasos was lead. Mm. You know, so this was at Planet One. Planet One was launching that place with that premiere. Now, first time ever in movie premiere, they had like a crowd of fans screaming. So those people were screaming. I didn't know why they were screaming. I was like, I think we should calm down now. The next thing, I just said, oh, yeah, yeah, start, start, start. I was like, start. I was looking around. What's happening? Where you start? You, don't, you know, like you're screaming at me so much. Why are you a presenter? Why are you here? You should know what to do. I was like, ah. you know, and it was always about the fear of asking questions too. But yes. Yes, because yes. I was worried about that. If I ask now, would I look, will it deem me incompetent? So I'm not ready for this job. I'm not seasoned enough. Okay, so let me just chest this in. I've been chesting so many things all my life. Let me just chest this in. As God will have it. We just had like commotion. Somebody was arriving. I saw bodyguards. I saw, I just knew this was like a political figure. I just didn't know who. At the time, Ashiwaju was, you know, and Bola Ahmed in Musa. Mm -hmm. Bola was the governor. So his wife was the matron, the chair lady of the day. So she for Lure meeting was on her way. She was already coming off the carpet. And then the police just shouted, get ready and action. And then the woman was coming with bodyguards. She was coming. I was, my heart was in my mouth. Because this was your first yes. opportunity to prove yourself. Yes. What, what do I ask? What's happening here? I don't even know. I'm seeing widow, widow, kinny widow. <laughs> what is going on? And then when she just came, she was coming, you know, she, people, ah! So I just put my foot forward. I used to have this pair of shoes that was like, you know, platform size. I put it forward. She, she looked at me. I said, mom, if you don't talk to me, I will, I will not remove my leg. She now laughs. Ah! She now just touched me. Okay, so, so I, I used to, to ask her what's going on, mm. you know, and then she answered. And I just, you know, so I asked, the first question I asked was, if I was your son, what would you change about me? Ah, she now looked at me, this hair, eh? So I just got attention. I was like, okay, yes, I had the first laser. So I started asking questions and we had a brilliant time talking. Mm. And then that foiled me. Everybody was coming. I was, you know, even when Genevieve came, you know, that was the first time. I knelt and said, Genevieve, marry me. And she said, yes. You know, my principal was like, you are fraternizing with them. Stop it. Stop getting close to them. I was just like, whatever. I'm the one on this, holding this mic. I felt like the mic was my power then. And then the red carpet was over. Time to go and watch the movie. Everybody entered, you know. You know, I, I, I just felt like I'd done something, but I didn't know what I'd done. Mm. You know, he was still screaming at me. You know, you're getting close. You're spoiling the frame. You are just, ah. And guess what? All the people that were cheering on the side, the fans, they saw this brother screaming at me. But we, they didn't understand it. So Kemi just said, oh, you know, I have to go now. I have something to do. So Kemi Adesiba left. So I now sat. I didn't know what. I was just sitting. Next thing, there was commotion again. The first lady was leaving. Big, big, big. They were pushing everybody. Big, 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 big. The next thing, she now entered. So I was even trying to say, ah, thank you, ma. But she, they didn't look my way. So when she entered the car, I think she looked and she saw me sitting. She now sent one of her protocol officers to call me. Nakim said, Her Excellency is calling you. I say, Hey! I just put my hand on my head. I don't do am. Because I thought maybe I was too you, familiar. You've did but it. So, yeah. I went, so I said, I'm so sorry, man. She said, Hold on. Have you, how long have you been doing this? I said, Mommy, this is actually my first job, um, my first day on the job. She said, What? 
you look like you, you're destined for this. She now said, wait, I have something for you. She, was, she gave me 50K. This was 50K in 50, 50 naira notes, like bondu. Mm. She just gave me, well done. I just quickly put it inside my shirt, under my arm. Bim! Ah! I said, my salary is 45K. Mm. This somebody gave me, I just put it like this. Bim! And then when I went, the principal was shouting, what did you go and tell her? What were they asking you? You see, when I tell you, you will talk big, talking, Who saying nonsense. Who was this producer? He's popular, but I will just leave his name for... And then I just smiled to myself. I said, and now guess what? I went back, you know, I was very happy about it. Now, for every event that came to the Sound City brand, every telecoms, anything, if it's not Daily, really, nobody else. How did that happen? It, it, from that show, when it went on... Now, guess what? They now said they had to be cutting me out of shots every time. So after I did that widow, I started going for events back to back. But anytime I interview people, I only see my gloved hand. I said, mm-hmm. I, just, <laughs> I, got, I got the politics of the, yeah? I cut him, cut him off, cut him out. You know, so he did that, they did that every time. Then eventually, when I now started, you know, doing more branded events and whatnot, you know, everybody started to see. And then we did this MTN Sound City Campus Storm. I'll go on campuses, everybody will go wild. Ah, ah. You know, they started to see the power. You know, my boss started to look at me differently. Yeah. And then even when I got to interview Beyonce, I did not... You interviewed Beyonce? Yes, now. Stop. Hold on. Beyonce was sitting like this. I was like, this is Beyonce here. Beyonce was like, why are you this close to me? I said, they will cut me out of this shot. <laughs> she said, they will do that to you, sweetie. I said, yes. I was like, this is Beyonce. I was like this with the mic in her. It's a lie. She said, I'm not kidding. You're a gangster. After the Disney Festival, I ran into a car. And she noticed me because I was singing all the songs and whatnot. Mm. But I didn't tell anybody the rushes I'd gotten. I just told my camera to shut up. Cameraman, when we now got to the studio, everybody was talking, oh, Snoop Dogg said hi to me, you know? And then then I looked at me. So what did you bring? I just told my cameraman, run it. There was a monitor there, play. Let's go, baby. And I was just quiet. Because everybody was saying, oh, I got Snoop Dogg. This is wavy, you know? All the girls, ah, I spoke. And I interviewed Ciara too. Because Ciara's name was Swift. But Beyonce, I was in a car. She allowed me to enter. They made Jay-Z wait. Because Jay-Z was in the other car. She was sweating. She even gave me a towel. You know, as Beyonce did. But it was the fact that, you know, that's why I'm like, you know, I'm a staunch member of the Beehive. Nothing anyone can say. Mm. So we all kept quiet. They were showing, showing, but showing their stuff. All the shout-outs they did. You know, the Nigerian artists they interviewed. And everybody was just looking at me. <laughs> just wasted our time there. When I played that, everybody was quiet. Hmm. Quiet for one hour. A moment. Nobody said it was a moment. It felt like an hour, but it must have been a few minutes. But nobody said anything. So basically, because you had become successful outside of work, yes, they, they had to just adjust. Which to was you. one of the reasons why they got rid of my ass too, because they felt I got bigger than the brand. So when hmm. the brand got rid of me, that's another thing that hits me below the bed. Like ah, what did, what did that do to you? It your know, confidence it broke me completely. It did. I didn't have anything to my name. I had zero naira because, you know, we're not paid. As, and I used to use my personal money for production. So I felt I always get it back. Yes. Do you get nothing was documented. The car that I'd been paying for was taken from me as well. So I resorted to taking yellow taxes. And then my sisters were in private schools at that time. So I was stuck. Because I was out a lot. I was staying in the office. They didn't see me. So now that these people had... And they, you know, brought the police to arrest me. Panty. You know, Panty. Who brought police to arrest you? Office people. It was signed. I went, so when they took me to the station... As God will have it, you know. Most of the police officers, I taught their kids in that primary school I was working at. So they recognized me. Ah, they're really waiting up now. You don't become star. Oh. Hey, this is my picking at this secondary school. Oh. This one, you know, they say, what's happened? What's happened? They say, there's a petition. Petition. Oh, God, they go to your house. Just give us the car. They say they want their car. And I tried to explain, oh, mm. I paid for the They said, no, 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 that there's no documentation to that effect. Just so I just, you know, I've not really shared this story. I just, you know what? I left. So I went home, had to pick my life from scratch, more or less. And everybody wanted to know what transpired, what transpired. Even the other VJs, when I told them what transpired, that day I had an event that I was supposed to do for Sound City. I went. Let's talk about rock bottom for you. Yes. Post Sound City. Hmm. Before Channel O. Channel yes. O was an eye opener. Because, and that's why I would always, always give Auntie Biola Labi all the hype in the world. She saw the pain in my eyes when I went to multi-choice that day. So many people had auditioned for this Channel O gig. Big names that you know. Artists, OAPs, actors, actresses. I was the last person to get there. And then I just saw the list. I said, ah, all these ones came here. Oh, it's not my work. <laughs> so they now said, oh, I should come into the... And that was the day I was going for that Children's Day event. I told you I borrowed someone's car. That's mm-hmm. why I went late. So I, I entered the room. I was like, I'm so sorry, guys. I'm leaving from hand to mouth presently. So I need to go. You said that? Show. Yes, I told them. 
we all have you looked at me, but and then they had all the foreign multi-choice execs in the building, the African, you know, mm. representatives. So they told me to, I did my, I didn't even look at the script. I said, so I did it. Then when they finished, they now called me into another room. Viola Labi now spoke to me. What happened? You know, very motherly tone. Me, where I don't bottle this thing up. My dad will not understand. You boss, Who will I tell? You boss cry. I know boss cry. I'm hard, though. I, I know no, I know that you're hard. Yes, nah. so I just, I can't talk. I talk, talk. She looked at me. Then the lady from Uganda, Leslie Kasumba, I mean, I love her to bits. She was mm. a channel old person. She was working in the essay, but she's Ugandan. Mm. And then she looked at me too. Mm. And then I said, okay, so can I go now? So I quickly ran to do that show. I got the money for that show like weeks after. So when they now called me for this, they, that they need me in SA, they need me to come. Ah, I said, eh. So <laughs> me and I went to the airport. I was now in economic queue. I was standing, you know, waiting, you know, I did wait. Now a protocol person just come meet me. I'm sorry, I'm not supposed to be here. I said, ah, so guess what? I now thought again. Imposter syndrome. Ah, so I'm not supposed to be here. Hey. Oh, you are know, yeah, preaching. I said, wait, though. So now, do people now want to now come and spoil it for me here again? I'm not supposed to be here, bitty bow. Okay, so, 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 you but know. I didn't get it. You know, you know. They told me I was on the wrong queue. They are dealt with you so much. Yes. That even when you're about to do channel, or you even think you're deserving of, of business. It. I didn't even think I was deserving of anything. Gee, because oh I felt that any job that came my hand was, give me the money quick, quick. So whatever price you gave me, I would do it. The first time I was to ever do the AMBC Red Carpet Live, um, this was when my late friend had passed. Goldie had passed on in 2013. Yes, yeah. So the um, AMVC is the first ever was like a month after. So, or two months after. So I was just, she died in February. This was like April, May. So I was just, you know, you can do it. Don't worry. I'm going to book you at the ECO for a week. Just come there. Just, you know. So I was scared. I was like, that was like going to be like my first outing. Will everyone now say, yeah, your friend passed on now. Yeah. You know, I, I was just thinking about a lot of things. Yeah. I also felt like I didn't need to be there because I felt like, you know, but long story cut short, I did a tremendous job. I was the main person who got there. That was even the one that I asked them, Genevieve, if your underwear could speak, what would he say to you? Mm. And she was like, ah, oh, you left me at home. You know, it's funny. We had so many moments, you know. Yeah. That was the first ever AMVC. And then they now brought me on stage to present an award. They were, the South Africans were insistent. I was like, no, I don't want to go on stage. I just want to go back to my room. No! They now put me and Funola of Fiebe. We made, we, that was when my first line ever of saying, if you don't want your children to look like me, me. make, yeah. because when we came on stage, nobody was clapping. So I now said it. If you don't want your children to look, everybody like it was a winning moment. Anyway, so the following year, I was called on to do it, but then power had power changed hands. So I'm Biola Ladbi had you know left, she had resigned, and then I don't I don't know maybe if the new people were feeling me or not. You know I just didn't mm. get it. But then it was a disaster, and then I was in a way cancelled. Why Why do you think that there was a need to please people even when you when you knew that they were not even trying to be welcoming? So you see, we'll take it back to like my Childhood. early days. Okay. I did not get all of that attention growing up. Mm. I'm not an attention. The thing is, people also mistake it for maybe I'm attention hungry, I'm an attention seeker. No. I didn't get all of this growing up. And then when it started to come to me, like I would say fame, I didn't really know how to deal with it. Yeah. But I was just going with the flow. Mm. And as long as I was making people happy and you know, mm. people wanted to be associated with me. Mm. Yeah. So... For all the while, I was getting all of this attention. I thought I misinterpreted it for, for love, for love, for respect and regard. Mm. But I will be very honest with you. I am the most disrespected human in Nigerian showbiz. Take it or take it. I am the most disrespected, the most disregarded, you know, and I get it hot, hot. Mm. People just don't know. When did you finally make this decision to say, you know what? I don't try for now. my 40s though. I told you I'm a late bloomer. I've been, well, not late in life, but I've been late with, with like my self-realization yes. and self-actualization. Yes. Self-discovery started early mm. because I found myself at a young age and I knew, okay, I have to hustle, mm. you know? But then my hustle was family-oriented. I mm. need to take my family to the next level. It was like a responsibility thrust upon me that I was not expecting. I had to mm. deal with it. But now, for myself now, it just started in my 40s. I am not kidding you. Which is why you said it to me once. I like how intentional you are now. You told me. Yeah, yeah said, I reached I'm out. I'm saying, you reached yes, out to me. Even, I spoke something. to I spoken to Wally that, you know, yeah. Wally was very insistent that, you know what, we've stopped all those social free. He yeah, Wally used to fight. All those social oh. I feel like <laughs> Wally was like, you know what, they really you stopped being a Father Christmas. Just, yeah, yeah. Mother Teresa, Father Christmas. I mean, Christmas also, I cannot also blame you because that's your personality. Yes, it is. If I could look back now, and tell my younger self, you know, mm. like, 
you're not going to be accepted no matter how hard you try at first. You're going to be cancelled so many times. You're going to be, you know, even like I said, cancel culture and whatnot. When I read about these things, I just laugh because <laughs> I'm, I, I'm on, I'm bear the brunt of it all. I've been places where I've heard, you know, and you know, there was time Tokyo was sharing a story with me that, oh, you know, um, there was a job and they were like, oh, don't, you know, employ. Even Idia said that thing to Chudi one time, like, oh, this one that, <laughs> I they, they should come and hear my own side, my own version of events. Ha! Hey? Even when I wanted to get my channel old job, they were called repeatedly not to employ me. Who are these people? Yes. Are these... I mean, it's, they're out there. These are these people that smile with you and laugh? Of course. And here's the crazy thing. I'm so spiritually inclined. I know them. I know them. You were generally the star at the time where cross-dressing, it even makes sense to Nigeria. Yeah. Yes. Now, it's okay to say, you know, well, there are a few cross-dressers. This is art. Mm -hmm. You understand? Yeah. Everybody's social media, everybody's woke now. So even if you came for a cross-dresser, they would be like, what's that? What's that? You understand? And they, you have the like of, likes of new school cross-dressers, yeah. right? But for some reason, there's a nasty comparison that happens between you, who has been working as an industry person, with these new newbies, I would True call that. them. How does that make you feel? At the very onset, now, first things first, I feel flattered and complimented when people compare me to other people. Oh, oh, they really did it first and whatnot, mm. or they really did not do it first. I really don't care for all those things. Mm. They're not, those opinions don't, are not my reality. But what do you think about the industry now, where it is now, and in terms of the level of acceptance for people who are gender non-conforming? Yes. Who are different. Are you, are you happy that you, you stayed the course? Are you happy that, yes. you know what, ah. after all said and done, this is 20 years in, I don't know, 20 years? Yeah, almost More 30. Than... From Jehovah. 94 to, um, oh, bloody hell. I wasn't even born in 94. Yeah, I know. You. So, like, are you <laughs> happy that, you know what, true, thick, and thin? Yes. Through all the mm -hmm. chaos and the insults and the disrespects. Yes. That you stayed the course to the point where this is 2023 and you're still bagging ambassadorial deals. You're still in the conversation. Yeah, I'm always going to be here. I'm like, eh. Hey, I'm, not, I'm always going to be here because I was destined to do this. This has always been my calling and I always knew mm. that I was, even I know that in my 50s, in my 60s, I'm still going to be rocking. My 70s, I'm going to be badass. I'm even going to even evolve more. Mm. You know, I'm even going to go global. Yeah. I've tasted, you know, I've tasted like international film when I worked with Channel O. Mm. I saw it and I reveled in it, mm. you know, and because I know that I'm like, the universe aligns, I'm on the bright side, no hate, no whatever, no agenda, no propaganda, no controversial nonsense. I know that I will always be here. When I look at your circle, right? Yeah. A lot of people have not changed. You're still rocking with the same friends of before. Yes. Yeah. You still have your pepper soup gang, as you call yeah. them. They're still the <laughs> Beverly. They're still Wally. And for me, somebody who has been through all these things, um, the only thing that comes to my mind when I'm saying, like, how, how does he cope is that you must have a, a, a village, a group of people who you know that they are holding yeah. you down, even when times are rough, even when yeah. you didn't have a job. What is, what is the value of friendship? Like, what does friendship and just family and just having these people around, what does it do to you as a person? Does it keep you grounded? Does it keep you sane? What is the value of just your friendships? Okay, so that's a good one. I mean, I've had, like I, as you said, same friends from back in the day and I, I know everyone. I'm, you know, an all-rounder. Everyone mm. is attached to me one way or the other. So I practically know everyone. I have acquaintances. I have colleagues. You know, I'm friends with everyone. Mm. Maybe save, maybe one or two. Just, you know, one or two experiences that wish. You know, it just didn't go down well. But now the thing is, I am, you see, my friendship with people also at the same time is also, um, it's, it's heavy. It's a responsibility for me because I have a lot of friends that are around me for blessings in terms of they are blessed to have me around. Mm -hmm. I have recognized that. Mm -hmm. I'm a source of blessing to them. Yeah. So it's a lot of work. Yeah. And to be very candid, a lot of them as well don't even know half of the things I go through. Because I feel like I'm going to burden them with these things. I'm wired like that. Mm -hmm. They come to me with all their problems. They come to me with all the wahala in the world. We find solutions to this. I'm Mr. Fix-It. But I really have nobody I can run to with mine. No, that's the truth. I've asked you this question so many times. And you're, and you've, you don't glide over. I'm, I'm happy that you're finally... No, but I have nobody to... It's the truth. It's a glaring truth. Ugly, raw truth. I have nobody to run to. So I deal with my things myself. I, there's nobody, really. 
What does that do to you? And what will he ask? I, I, I have to keep believing. My coming on this show, on this podcast, was not just about the fact that, oh, you know, I mean, if we come, maybe they'll pick this interview, it'll go viral. Nah! It was more of excitement for you. Because I know your journey. We've, you know, we've yeah, been yeah, through a whole yeah, lot. Yeah. And it's the trajectory for me, the beauty of it all. Mm -hmm. And how, when you started, you know, I could tell, hmm, it was, you know, a little shaky. Am I, am I getting this right? Yeah. But you've eased into it. It's the effortlessness for me. And I'm also here, not only to get something therapeutic from this, mm -hmm. but also to also reveal in your grace. Because everyone is blessed, you know. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing for me. So those are the little things I can get. Mm. from people you know without asking for anything without demanding for too much but your attention your time your energy your platform is I see it like I am just starting afresh which is why I say <laughs> my 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 kind my breed is rare I'm very grounded so I'm up very grateful for everything that comes my way now those are the things I live by mm. if I'm going through stuff because I've gone through a whole lot I'm still going through a lot I really don't have people that I want to say this to, you know? Because even I would use um, Wale's friendship as a template as well. I met Wale through a mutual friend. At that point, me and our mutual friend were even fighting, safe. And, you know, Wale was going through a phase, you know, and I knew that I was the person who would be there for him. Which is why you can't underestimate Wale's loyalty because Wale knows there's some things that are unspoken. Mm. Do you get? Um, you mentioned Beverly as well. It's the same. Beverly knows like I'm a ride or die, which is why even recently Kim said something about, oh, you know, when she came out of Big Brother, she was broken. You know, we helped her heal. And even before she was hustling, she would call me and say, what gigs am I not taking? Please pass them to me. I've seen beautiful loyalty from my friends who are close to me. Mm. And their loyalty is enough. When it was my 40th, I usually, like I said, I would do parties for everybody. But when it was my turn, I was like, you guys, I don't want anything, please. You know, that was even COVID period. So I was like, please, don't let Lagos, Lagos State government aside calling me. Ah, mash a party, you. you know. But then they went out of their way to buy me a really nice car, which I'm obsessed with, by the way. You know, as I said before, this is one of my most important um, episodes. Uh, this yeah. is an important episode for me because I've watched you over the years. I think that, you know, I connect with you what you said, what you said, you know, you're one of the most disrespected, yeah. you're one of the most relegated entertainers mm -hmm. from Nigeria. And on this show today, I just want to really give you your flowers because I grew up watching you, right? And you've inspired a lot of people, yeah? So, this flower and I won't block us, we'll not get <laughs> roses. Please give me flowers. So, on this give show me the today, garden. I want to say thank mm. you, dearly, for being yourself through and through. Woo! Thank you. You, you know, the entire time when you were talking, I'm just like, eh, eh, eh? and you continue. I, I, eh? I, 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 eh? I, I say eh? I say your face. <laughs> because I want, I, I want to even ask more questions, but I can't. But there's so many people that you've helped that I know that you've helped. My friend and I had conversation about you even before this show, and she said you're an angel. So, for the sake of, I want to do it because this it means so much to me to say, you know what, you're an inspiration. And thank you for being yourself. Thank you for not changing. I'm happy that Nigeria is adjusting to see that, you know what, people like you are special. And I really have to say that you are special. And for this reason, you deserve your flowers. Thank you. You will go thank down in, in the much. history books as uh, uh. someone who defined the culture for us here in Nigeria. Thank Let's you. Put your hands together for Daily. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. This has been... How would I even take this safe? I don't talk. Oh, no, I talk yeah. since so... Mm. A way, but I mean, I, I felt very comfortable mm. sharing this. And I think, mm. you know, as time progresses, we have to share these stories as much as we mm. can. You know, there's so much. Lip Ting, my favorite tea brand, is the yes. sponsor of the show. Love and they're the reason why we can afford to have such conversations on the show. They did well by coming on Yeah. Bond. So there's something that we do, courtesy of Lip Ting, called Spill the Tea. Okay. Oh, right? Mm. So just basically questions that you probably didn't answer earlier. That might put you on the spot. Maybe not on the spot, Sha. Okay. Okay, so the first one is, you've done so many things from being a show host to being a fashion icon. What other creative fields will you have loved to explore? Or would you love to explore? Um, ah, that's a good one. I did try music at some point. I was forced into it, actually. I was really forced into the music. They when? made me come into the studio. Yes, so myself, Terry G, a couple of other guys, they dragged me to the studio. I just, they just told me to just come for, like, you know, now I come visit and hang out. And then the first mics, 
And then when it was time to shoot the music video, I didn't turn up. I just felt like music was not my calling. Considering the fact that I used to be a singer in the choir. Mm. But then, I was a terrible singer. Off key, off tune, off pitch. I was just a fantastic dancer. So we'd have explored music, not really. But if there's something I'm going to try out in the creative industry, I'm a brilliant writer. I like to think so myself. And I'm so going to channel that into a memoir. So that's coming soon. Yes, yes, please. Yes. We deserve one. Um, you're always making daring statements with your looks through mm-hmm. all this. Have you ever had a serious case of wardrobe, a wardrobe malfunction? What's happened? Ah, uh, uh, many times. <laughs> 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 that my trouser will rip from my crotch area to my butt area. But fortunately, all the genitalia and the odds and ends are not exactly. hanging out. Yeah. Yes, but I've had that severally. I've, you know, um, falling off stage, mm. whipping my hair back and forth. And then um, I think one recent, a recent one, yeah, um, should be on the... Oh, yes, this happened like a few weekends ago. Runway, I just won the outfits and then the zipper was out. So, and I was wearing like swimming trunks. So, my um, boy squat, I was pointing out of the pants. I didn't know. It was about one time, just about to go on the runway. I was pointing. How was that thing pointing? Hey, yeah, block us. So, I had to wear a cape on it. But I covered up for it. Thank yeah. you for the cape. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, this one I wanted to ask. This was very important for me. Yes. And please be honest. Do you think Nigeria has been fair to you if you could choose to be a national... A national of another country, what country would it be and why? Every time I go to South Africa, the love is amazing. It feels like royalty has arrived. I still can wrap my head around it. Mm. Like, even from the hotel lobby, mm. I'm treated like royalty and I'm like, I don't even get this in my country. No, not like I'm asking for it, but you mm. know, it's so, ah, it's so exhilarating to see. So yes, um, would I say South Africa? And then I would even use, yeah, Barbados. I went to Barbados the other day. No, you see me saying the other day, like, and good Lord, every time I went on the beach, everybody knew who I was. It was stunning. It shocks me every time because I'm like, how do you know? I would ask, yeah. where do you know me from? And they'd be like, hello, excuse me. So I definitely would say South Africa because it's an industry, a country that, appreciates that, has, talent, in, that has appreciated me. The industry mm. is so welcoming. They love my expressiveness and they keep asking me every time, how do you do it in Nigeria? Mm. Surprising thing, I was to do a commercial for a brand. They told me in Nigeria that I was too gay to function. But whereas, one of the most flamboyant personalities in South Africa so did amazing. the same advert. Mm. He did the same ad. Yeah. And he asked me, I knew you were supposed to do this advert. What happened? And you're not burnt about it. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, woo, shem. You mm. call them out. I say, no, so easy, no need. So, yeah. yeah. I love South Africa too. I, yeah. I think that... I would thrive there. Yes. But I mean, I love my country too. So yeah. I know we love Nigeria. If you anyway, said me that I've been here since. Uh, thank you I for love coming my Nigeria. on the show. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank Sip you. Some lip sync for inspiration. Of course. Uh, for that memoir. Uh, we need that memoir as soon as possible. Yes, so. Thank you so much for coming on the show, Darren Lee. See, honey, lip sync. Ah, mm. love me some lip sync. And mm-hmm. I still have the yellow shirt you gave me. Oh. Yes, I do. Oh, well, you know, come. Mm. Hey, no, that one is under serif and that but, thing. Anyway. At least I've made up for it now. Yes, you have. Yes. Please help me I sign out the show. I know that my people want to run away, but I mean... Okay. Imagination, innovation, social consciousness, evolution. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> the one and only, the unshakable, unstoppable, unequaled and unparalleled, my day one for life, a source of infinity. Ah, the eighth world wonder. I think it's one of life's unexplainable mysteries. Temi Santobad, Togalant, Worry Boy, Area. Don't be fooled though, by all that fine boy. His streets gone. This is, of course, tea with hay. It's the tea with hay pod. And of course, it's powered by the one and only, my favorite. I'm not saying this because people should look for me. I love Lipton. I live for it. So how did it start? Let me just tell you quickly. Lose the excuses. Find the results. Gain the reasons. Just put it like that. Because Temisan, unstoppable fireball of energy. <laughs>